Okay, so how much memory does your M4 Mac need in 2025? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So one of the top questions I get asked all the time on my channel, probably 15 to 20 times a month, someone asks me, should I get 16 gigs of RAM, 24 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of RAM? They're always asking me, I don't wanna make a mistake. How much RAM should I get on my new Mac or MacBook? It's really important to me, can you help me out? And let's just be completely honest here too. Look at Apple's pricing here, it's crazy, right? Let's just admit, we'll all agree right now, it's crazy pricing. So RAM is very expensive and we wanna make the right choice for sure. Now I think I'm in a good position to help everyone because not only do I get to talk to hundreds in the comments, hundreds of people per month that love Macs and how they use them and everything like that. I also have tested a whole bunch of Macs around me. I have eight gig, 16 gig, 24 gig. I get to test different RAM levels because of obviously I do videos. So I have a good understanding of kind of, I think what I can do with each RAM level. And I wanted to put it together in a video. Okay, I think one of the most important charts to put this all in perspective is the one sitting right over here. Take a look at this. It says, how much RAM do you need on a Mac? Now, this is what I think. I think around 16 gigs here is the, kind of the base level, right? I think 50% of all people will fall into this category. Now, these are people, I'll get into it, but they do just basic stuff, like a you know, student doing email, doing um, you know, watching YouTube, stuff like that. But 50% of all users should be in the 16 gigabytes. Now, this thing can handle just about anything you throw at it. It just depends on how quickly it can do it and if there's any frustration behind it. And we'll talk about that. So then the other thing here is 24 gigs. And I actually have a, a M4 Mac mini over there with 24 gigs and I love it. About 20% of users should fall into this category over here. But between these two, look at this. This is already a big chunk of people. 32 gigs is 15% of users. Another 15% should fall in here for specific reasons, which we'll talk about in a second. 48 gigs is about eight out of 100, so 8% here of people. But look at this chunk here. Now the other chunks, 64, 96, and 128, is a very small, slight, like a little sliver here. See this little piece of the pie? 4%, 2% for 96 gigs, and 1% for 128 people. So one out of 100 for 128 gigs of, those are what people should actually be buying, in my opinion. Um, but anyways, you get the idea here. So you can take a look at this, but the, the thing that kind of puts this all together, let me just show you another chart. This is the RAM breakdown. So realistically, if you, you know, if you think you need 64, you know, or 128, it's really gonna be a small percentage of people up here, you can see it. This is gonna be 16 gigs to 48 gigs is 93% of people I think fall up to, you know, it goes up to 48 gigs. So 93% of people should be no higher than 48 gigs bought. If you need, think you need 64 or 128, you need to fall into the 7% chunk right here. And uh, so the chart kind of shows you right there, the little red pie there is so small, you can see it. And this is kind of what people, it's a misperception of a lot of people out there. They think they need more RAM than they do. When in actuality, a lot of times people need less RAM. It's always like one less than they actually think they need. So if they need 48 again, they might need 32 only. This is how I've been seeing, you know, people reacting to how good, you know, Apple computers use the RAM. It can use swap, but it uses it so well that they can get away with less RAM than they actually need. Okay, so now it's time to go through each individual RAM level. I'm gonna kind of give you examples of who should be buying it. We're gonna start with 16 gigs of RAM. So here we go, 16 gigs of RAM. Who is it? Right over here. It's gonna be basically, well, we, we talked about 50% of users should be in this category for casual users and light creators, all right? What's this mean? So this is gonna be students, just office workers, you know, doing spreadsheets, web developers, very light, YouTubers and basic editing. So this can be anywhere from 1080p to 4K. This will definitely handle 4K perfectly fine. I'm perf I'm, I've used them before, perfectly fine. But again, this is, you know, if you're doing this a lot, you may wanna just move up a little bit, but it can still handle it. it. Says, why would you get 16? Enough for most daily tasks and occasional creative work. You know, definitely can do that. 1080p or simple 4K is fine. And the things like iMovie and Final Cut, it's gonna run. It's not gonna be 100% perfect, but it's gonna be about 95% there. So it's, it's plenty good for a lot of that stuff. You can still handle 20 to 30 browser tabs, light photo editing, like Photoshop, Pixelmator, 1080p or 4K editing, like I said here. Now the limitations is it's not ideal for high resolution video editing or complex multitasking. When it says not ideal, it doesn't say it can't do it. It's just not ideal for it. But this is where 50% of all users should just buy it and they're totally happy with it. Email, watching YouTube, spreadsheets, everything like that, you fall into that category. You're not running a major you know, YouTube channel or major organization at work or something or doing major 3D modeling or LLMs. This is where you wanna be, but let's keep moving. Okay, the next level is gonna be 24 gigs of RAM. Let's take a look over here. So here we go, 24 gigs of RAM. This is for creators and power users on a budget. So this is the this is where I am, power users that I think I am on a budget. So who should buy this? 
This is going to be content creators, YouTubers, and podcasters that, again, are falling to my size. So I would say under 100,000 subscribers. You can just about do everything with this, and you're not going to break the bank. You still need to make money enough to pay for your bills, but you don't want to, like, you know, obviously spend way too much money on the computer. Just buy the 24. You're going to be perfectly happy with it. It's going to give you a little bit of room. This is going to be for uh, designers using Adobe Creative Suites like Photoshop, things like that. It'll handle it perfectly fine. A lot of that's handled online anyway, but still, this can do it. It says, why would you get this? Provides breathing room. That's the main thing here for multitasking and creative work beyond light use. And that's exactly what it did for me. When I was at 16, I was using a lot of swap. And then obviously when I got 24, it gave me some breathing room. That's really what, you, you know, this is where you're paying up for it, the extra 200 bucks. Now you can get into multi, you know, 4K multi-layer video editing, where if you're going with 16, you don't want, if you do too many layers, you're gonna start to feel it. Here you can do a couple more layers in here, large PSD files, Photoshop edition and Logic Pro sessions. You can really start Logic Pro at 24 gigs. You don't really wanna go maybe too much less than this if you're serious about it. And then you can do browsing, Photoshop, Final Cut, all open at once, so multiple, multiple things open, multiple major programs open at once. This should be able to start handling it. The limitations, though, you'll start to feel tight under 6K workflows or heavy machine learning like LLMs locally. Obviously, it's not a ton of RAM. So you're going to start feeling things. And a lot of people don't do 6K work, but some people do. But you're going to start feeling it at that point, right? Now, I can push this thing, 3D modeling, large language models. But overall, 24 gigs is, again, where 20% of users are. So now we're talking 70% of users should fall into these two categories. So we only have 30% of the users left. Okay, so next now we have 32 gigs of RAM and who actually should be buying 32 gigs. A lot of people think they should, should you. All right, right over here. 32 gigs of RAM. This is for professionals, creators, and devs. And what does that mean? So this is going to be full-time video editors. Maybe you have a bigger YouTube channel. I would say this is going to be between maybe 100,000 and 500,000 subscribers. And or you're a worker, you do a lot of other stuff for other people. You do video editing for maybe clients and stuff like that. So you're a professional. And also here, developers using Docker, Xcode, Android Studio. So I think this is a good sweet spot for people that are running VMs. We're just going to use Docker as an example. Or Xcode developers, I think this should handle it pretty good. Obviously, you're getting paid for that, so you might as well pay for the extra RAM there as well. But how much do you need is another question. I think 32 is the sweet spot. Professionals using multi-monitor setups. The reason I want to throw that in, because if you have multiple monitors, you usually have multiple big apps open. This can handle it just fine. So why would you get this? Provides better performance under heavy load, ideal for long form editing and code compiling. That's maybe why. This can now handle up to six and 8K video. Not that you would want to do this on this. You know, Maybe you'd want a little bit more, but it can still handle this, and it's not going to be a total disaster for you with multiple effects and layers. So we got multiple VMs or containers. So we're getting into this area right here with 32 gigs, Xcode, Chrome, and iOS simulator. And then we got DaVinci Resolve and After Effects, you know, using them all at once. Limitations. You'll feel pressure with large multi-cam or blender work or running large LLMs. And again, this is going to be 15% of the users in here. So between the 16, the 24, 32, this could be 32 or 36. There's, you know, I'm just going to lump them into the same thing. I'm going to skip the 36 gigabytes. I'm going to say they're about the same. So if you add the 15% here, what is that? We had 50%, 20%, and then 15%. So, I mean, that's a big percentage already. That's what, 75% or whatever, 80, 50, 60, 70, 85% of people should be in these first three categories. So it only leaves 15% left. But let's keep moving to see who those 15% are. Okay, the next level here, let's talk about it, is going to be 48 gigs of RAM and who should be using this right here. First of all, it's only going to be about 8% of users here, and it's going to be for heavy, basically heavy multitaskers and advanced users. But who should be buying this? Now, this is important because we're kind of breaking down the differences here. I think content creators with large channels, but what do I mean by large channels? I basically mean 500,000 to maybe 1 million subscribers where you have multiple people working for you. You put a lot of extra into your videos with maybe five, six, seven layers, and they need to work really good, right? Obviously, you can't get away with videos like I make, very simple ones. You need a lot more. This is my, you might want to get up to 48 here. So I got YouTubers, podcasters, but large channels. UX designers using Docker, browser, design tools all at once. It says, why would you need 48? Offers a cushion for professionals juggling multiple creative and dev apps. So if you're juggling a whole bunch of things at once, a whole bunch of things are being thrown at you, and you just want a little bit, you know, breathing room there as well, you get the 48 here over the 32 or the 36. It gives you just that much more breathing room. But also you can handle basically multi-cam 8K timelines at this level, 100 plus browser tabs with the dev environments open. So we're talking 100 tabs plus, and it's going to handle it just fine here. 
Logic Pro with large plug-in chains. So if you're doing Logic, large Logic Pro you know, applications or, or projects, I guess you'd wanna call them with tons of layering and stuff, this is where you wanna be at least 48 gigs of RAM. 3D workflow with Blender and Cinema 4D. So we're talking, you know, this is where we're getting into like this kind of CAD area, right? Where you're doing more professional CAD work and stuff like that, 48 gigs here minimum maybe. So limitations, we'll feel pressure with large 3D models and massive data sets and large language models as well. So while this is gonna be good for almost everybody, like I said, when we add this onto it, I think we're up to that, you know, we're, we're up there, let's just put it that way. We only have a little bit, you know, a little bit of the pie left. So this can handle everything. And even in like these large, you know, YouTube creators that have 500,000 subscribers, a million subscribers, they're gonna be just fine with 48 gigs of RAM. So then we still got three levels left and who needs those last three levels? Let's talk about it. Okay, 64 gigs of RAM. Who's actually gonna need 64 gigs of RAM? Over here, this is really gonna be for 3D artists, scientists, and you know, basically machine learning developers, right? Only 4% of users might need actually 64 gigs. This is the area where I think a lot of YouTubers think they need it. I'm gonna say basically 3D animators may be professional work or elite YouTubers, someone like a Marquise Brown Lee, someone that's got maybe you know a million subscribers and up that have multiple things going on at the same time and have multiple people working and, and you just want everything to work and you have the money, you have enough money to throw around just to get this, just always have that extra pressure. I think 64 is fine here. Machine learning engineers, data scientists working with large data sets. 64 is going to be pretty good for you, right? So it says high capacity for professional simulation and parallel computing workloads. So we're just upping it just a little bit more. But a lot of people think that they need more than 48. And I think, you know, this is going to show you 64 is, is really for people beyond YouTube, right? I mean, less just a few of them on there that maybe, you know, they can afford it. So it can't handle 3D rendering and real-time animation. Again, machine learning, model training and interference, running large data sets of memory, simulation tools, MATLAB, Fusion 360, et cetera. The limitations, we'll feel pressure with large language models or studio quality video editing projects. And we'll talk about that in a second. But this can handle, so I think this is kind of like the, the cutoff, right? For anybody doing YouTube, this is plenty. For anybody that's just not getting paid back from a corporation that has a buco bucks, just stay here at the, at the highest. Don't go up to the next couple levels but there are people that are gonna want that, right? And who are they? Who are the next level of people? It's a tiny, tiny little slice of that cake. Let's find out. Okay, so now we're up to 96 gigabytes of RAM and who in the world needs this much RAM? Right over here. First of all, let me just state, that this is only about 2% of users, so two out of 100, I think, need this actually. This is gonna be for big data and VFX workflows here. So VS, VFX Studios here, who should be buying this? This is gonna be, um, right here, is gonna be artificial intelligence and machine learning researchers, advanced audio engineers. So if you get the idea here, these are people that actually make direct money back and time is complete money to them. They're big companies, big corporations, or big you know people that are important out there that actually every second counts to them. 96 gigs is where you wanna be, you'll spend the extra money here. So why do you get this? Provides high throughput, creative and compute intensive applications without crashing or lag. So you never run into any issues with this RAM. You're always gonna be fine with everything you can basically throw at it. It can handle massive 3D scenes, multi-layer 8K video with real-time effects, training moderate, basically machine learning models. You're gonna see moderate here though. Sample libraries and post-production tools. So limitations, nothing short of film studios, AI companies, or massive LLMs. So this is gonna be able to handle most things anyone can throw at it. Again, normal users should never think about buying this, you don't need it. But if you are doing things where you're developing apps and you need just, you know, time is complete money to you. An extra 10 or 15 minutes is gonna you know, be worth a lot of money to you. Could be hundreds of dollars, then you pick one of these up, right? But in actuality, it's only these 2% of users that actually need this, and they probably already, to be honest with you, know that they need it. So if you don't know that you need this, you don't. And then that leaves us to 128 gigs. So let's actually bring up that over here. So who in the world needs 128 gigs here? Well, here we go. This is gonna be for the elite pros and enterprises, all right? 1% of users here, 128 gigabytes. So now we're talking film studios, scientific computing labs, AI companies. I don't know if you heard this, but um, Severance is the actual show that Apple created on you know, the Apple TV. They actually said that they were, you know, the guys were actually using a lot lower RAM than this and, and really basic Macs to do some of the editing on. So of course, 128 gigs is gonna be more than enough for editing, even with shows like Severance, just keep that in mind. 
for sure. Absolutely. They even proved it. There's a whole article on it. So that's true. Scientific Computing Labs, again, these are companies and AI companies. These are companies that need this specifically for testing their products. And they don't want to waste any time because it's the faster they can get it to market, the more money they get because they have to beat the competition. That's where the money comes in. So why do you need this highest memory available in the M4 Max? Again, that's only because the, the, the Studio and the Mac Pro are still on the M3 at the time of this video. There'll be more you know, RAM coming out with them later on the M4s. But right now, this is going to be for everything else that's M4. This is ideal for enterprise grade use and studio scale projects. Can handle distributed basically machine learning frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch, full 3D movie pipelines, scientific simulations, climate modeling. You can see that. So think about a clim climate modeling for a major company doing something on a project. They're getting paid a ton of money to figure out something for the government or something, and they want to do this climate modeling. This is the kind of RAM you'd buy for that because money's really no object at that point. Running three or four VMs plus dev environments and render queues. I would actually, you know, claim that, you know, obviously three or four really large VMs, or it could be maybe 10 or 15 small VMs. You could still run them here. Then the limitation here is only large corporations and the largest LLMs or go to Studio or, the, you know, the, the, the Mac Pro here. So obviously large language models is going to be, you know, the, the more RAM you get, the better here. Um, the 512 you can get with the M3 Studio. Um, obviously, you might want to get that, because, but it's not available on the M4 because we don't have the M4 Studio at the time of this video. So you get the idea. The, you know, obviously, there's going to be a need for that for local large language models. But like I told you before, it's a very small percentage of people that are actually running that. It might be a lot of people watching me on my channel, but it's probably less than 5% of the population running any type of local LLM on their computer. It's a very, very small niche thing. So most people don't need that. All right, let's wrap this up now. So the moral of the story is everyone that thinks they need 64 probably needs 48. If you think you need 48, you probably need 32. This is the way that I've been learning by talking to all the people out there. Mac does a really good job. They, you know, a swap memory and everything else. And you can even do a lot of good stuff with 16. It could do just about anything. It, all these other ones can do just a lot slower in some cases where you're going to run into a little issue here and there, but it can still handle it surprisingly, which is crazy. Once you get above, you know, 64 and up, it's just going to be very specific reasons for that. Like you have the money from a large YouTube channel. You want to run very specific LLMs and things like that. You know you already need it, right? But the people that don't, they should stay with 40 or less. That's kind of what I've learned over the years, but you guys tell me if I'm right or wrong. I'll wrap up the video. I just wanted to give kind of a breakdown of where everyone should be. And in my opinion, again, this is just my opinion. But if you guys disagree, post in the comments and we will talk to you the next one. I make tons of videos like this every month, including my Apple News every weekend. Check that out. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.